Yes. Now, there's only one place to start this week, not Burnley Hopkins, not Dennis Lebedev. No, it's St. George of Hammersmith and last week's victory in the London grudge fight at the O2. George Groves was the slight betting underdog. He'd been victim to about three months of abuse from James DeGale. It was, and let's not forget this now, a very ugly build-up to what was a sensational fight a sensational outcome after 12 tenths and blood filled rounds the tightest of tight decisions went to groves he's at a celebration meal tonight so i had to get him earlier and i asked him if at the end of the fight he was relieved that it was all over i wouldn't say relief came in steve but um yeah no, you know, it's been a long time coming. The, fight, the fight itself had been a been a been a you know a hyped up thing for years not just for camp for years and literally it was who's going to have the pride of West London. As they said, you know, Frank Warren and the rest of the team tried to put pressure on me, what they thought, because they thought, oh, we've got the man who's been on the bigger stage and dealt with the bigger occasions. But they forget that I've boxed at the MEN in front of thousands and thousands of people. I've boxed out in the States, you know. In Germany. Uh, exactly. I've been about, I, I, you know, I, I'm a, a fighter that can deal with the big events. And, um, you know, it came down to it on the night that... Um, I, I t- showed up at the O2 Arena, a packed arena that was there to see me, mm. um, see me fight. I had that pressure, and I had the fact that every boxing writer, critic, journalist in the country hit me to lose, apart from maybe one percent of those. So, you know, I was going into a, a fight. I was the donkey, if you were like bookmakers made me an outside chance, and um, but I went in there, I kept calm, kept composed, kept to a game plan, showed that I can deal with pressure. And beat beat James Gale his own game apparently. <laughs> well, that, that's the key. Is the key is that a that you dealt with the pressure, and b that you had a game plan. And even as the rounds went on, um, and in that ninth round when you got cut, and he seemed to catch you with a good shot, you still stuck to the game plan. Yeah, I mean we was in the, we was in the ringside studio today, and um, you know everyone's looking at the fight through Degal goggles. Everyone's of course they are on, on a Degal hype, and that ninth round where sensational. If you if you if you score the rounds, he, he he wins the round, but by one clear punch. Sure. And and the um the bit where apparently I was I was on the I was on my way out, he steps on my front foot and he misses with his left hand mm. and catches me with a head. And they, it's nice because at the end of the round they show the the highlight of the round and the highlight of the round James's clinical point. You see it quite clearly that he just nuts me and then from that headbutt because. Someone standing on my front foot. Once my front foot's released, I stumble back, and then my legs are fine because I'm not actually hurt. I'm carrying on boxing. So have, have you have you been a little bit sort of uh, had your nose put out a little bit, George? By you know, as you say, people watching it through the gal goggles. Is that is that sort of on your mind a little bit? Um, no, I mean you listen to the Sky commentary. They're forever talking about waiting for um, the gal to take Degal over to and do stop something. you. Degal, mm. yeah, you know. But Jim Watt is um, probably one of the most um, you know about boxing people you know, boxing commentators I, I respect his opinion more than anyone else's and he's usually always right and um but to be fair everyone got behind the Degal bandwagon and really thought that I wasn't going to win that I didn't stand a chance and that any stage Degal might switch it on and get and get get to me but the truth of the matter is that I took away anything he could do simply by adjusting my front foot which is better than his mm. out jabbing him because my jab's always been better than his. And because of that, his corner telling him to jab, he was never there to throw a jab. He, he knew, he, he said it in his press conference after, said, I didn't want to make any mistakes because he knew <coughs> if he jabs, he's going to get hit. And that's what was happening. So, George, was it easier than you expected, you and Adam Booth expected, in some ways? Exactly, it was sort of exactly how we thought it was going to be. Sure. You know, he's um, saying we nicked it. Didn't nick it. We outboxed him. We outfought him, and then um, I landed more telling punches. I mean, I could have done it much better. You know, if it was if I boxed perfectly, mm-hmm. I think it would have it would have gone the same. The first three rounds would have been about giving him nothing, taking mm-hmm. his confidence away from him, letting him try to find different ways. But he wasn't getting any help from his corner. He got, his promoter was telling him to throw an uppercut. And the uppercut was never there to be thrown. Because well, you uh, were never there to take it. Well, he was there. He was he, one round. He came out and stood still. Tried that, didn't work. One round, he came out orthodox. Tried that, didn't really work. And he ran out. He ran out of ideas pretty yeah. quickly. And then from then on, it was about breaking him down with body shots, with head shots, and not getting carried away. I mean, the only information 
that, that I got, which was a negative in my corner, mm -hmm. was don't be greedy, don't be greedy, don't get greedy, don't throw too many punches. So just do what you got to do, don't go looking yeah. for something spectacular. George, yeah, how, exactly. many, how many stitches did you have in the cuts? Or didn't um, you have any? I've got, I've got four in each. I've got um, four in each. Four across my uh, across my um, left eye and then on top of my head as well. Okay, and and and, and George, uh, after the bout, just confirm again. Did you and James shake hands? Did you exchange any words, or was it just a brush of a glove or nothing? Um, before the before the fight, usually he turns away, he doesn't want to touch my glove. Mm -hmm. After Jim McDonnell, who who knows who's a bit more savvy, thought I better shake his hand. Mm -hmm. He shook my hand, said, "Well done, good fight." And then James gradually sort of looked away as I touched his glove. But that's fine because we're going to box again someday. Which is not now. As soon as yeah. you bring money to the table, you might box. Well, what about that someday? What might, you know, if there was enough money on the table, would that be in six months, or are you thinking to build it even more and fight in a year or longer? What, what, you know, what's your? I mean, it's early days, but what would be your ideal uh, third meeting in theory with James DeGout if if it ever happens? I mean, the ideal third meeting is that he comes away from this, he doesn't learn his lesson, sticks with the same team gets brought on because he's a fantastic promoter that will get him you know he's brought back fighters from yeah. defeat in the likes of Amir Khan Amir Khan come off the back of getting a smash out and yeah. then getting a, a world title shot in a year so no doubt he'll get there but he won't have the direct route that I'm going to have no doubt he'll have to go around the houses so we'll fight one day and for a world title I'm sure but so it won't be nothing this year are you, I won't be this year now. Are you looking for a, a world title or, or a British and Commonwealth defence? Or what are you looking for this year, George? In theory, ne next six months or so. Um, I'm not ready for a world title, Steve. You know that. I'm yeah, really I, really I agree. Um, but in 18 months' time, mm. we'll be, and I'm hoping to be at, the, at, the, at the, the elite level of world class. You know, like with the likes of Cole Frotch and, and Andre Ward and those names you know and I want to be there I don't want to stay there I don't just want to challenge and be forgotten about so I know I've got to you know, become battle hard and I've got to work hard in the gym I've got to put some put some real graft in to get there and I'm willing to do that and obviously in the meantime I've got two shiny belts to defend there's a couple of other belts that can be picked up the European title's out there I'm not sure if that's still vacant so you know I'm going to keep busy but, but most of all I'm going to be back in the gym working hard developing my skills adding more strings to my bow, Steve, and so that when, when it ain't going my way, I've got a plan B, a plan C, and a plan D. Well, you certainly, uh, you certainly looked like you had that the other night. Listen, uh, listen, George, congratulations. Well done, and we'll speak to you very soon. Brilliant. Thanks for having me on, Steve. That was George Groves talking to me a bit earlier. By the way, James DeGaulle, who will not be joining us tonight, it's nothing personal. He's gone away to Tenerife for a short break, and we've had struggles, a uh, few struggles tracking him down. By the way, he had 16 stitches in his wound which i found was amazing